Good morning. Welcome to St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Maple, Ontario. It's May 19th, 2024. I welcome you all, those who are here in the sanctuary, those who are watching the live stream, and those who are uh, going to watch the video replay. It's a beautiful sunny day and, uh, and a long weekend uh, here in Maple. And so I hope you all are enjoying your long weekend and you'll enjoy your time with us. So friends, uh, without uh, further ado, I'm going to introduce our minister for today, uh, Lynn Brampton Ledeca. Lede how are you? Is it Ledeca? Lidke. 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 There we go. Thank you, Lynn. And I will pass it over to you. Well, this is a beautiful morning, and it is a pleasure to be with you here today on this Pentecost Sunday. Uh, so for those who are able, let us stand as we open our service with the call to worship. Breathe upon us, Holy Spirit. And inspire our worship with your truth. Stir in our hearts, Holy Spirit. And fill us with your love. Strengthen us, Holy Spirit. And move us to act with your power. Breathe in us, Holy Spirit, and receive our prayers and praise. Let us now lift our voices together as we sing our first hymn, hymn number 390, Spirit Divine, attend our prayers, and we will sing verses 1, 2, 3, and 5. be seated. Let us pray. God of power and possibility, with the flame of your spirit, give us energy to move into the world in Jesus' name. With the breath of your spirit, refresh us to engage life in its complexity. Your spirit embraces us in the diversity and difference you wove into your creation and unites us in your love. We praise you for your presence with us in every time and place. In this time of worship, send the Holy Spirit once again. Renew us to serve you in the world, in a world that aches for healing and wholeness that you offer through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. God of mystery and mercy, we confess that we have not always paid attention to the urging of your spirit to follow your will and your way. Too often we claim to belong to Jesus, yet we ignore his teaching. You created us to love one another, 
but we resist loving those who differ from us. Stir in our hearts with your Holy Spirit, transform who we are, and direct who we shall become through Christ's redeeming love. Amen. Amen. These words are worthy of our trust and acceptance. In Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Be at peace with God and with yourself and with one another. Thanks be to God for his steadfast love and mercy. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Peace everyone. Now, I believe this is the time for the youth message, or as I like to call it, for the young and young at heart. And as I make my way to the front, I just want to make sure that everyone has a pinwheel. Does everyone have a pinwheel? We're going to do a phrase song. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, that gives us time to find a pinwheel. Yeah, no, I got the words. All right, now it's the time for the young and the young at heart. So good morning. Oh, I love that. Do you think we can do it just a tiny bit louder? Yeah? Good morning. Good morning. Oh, I love it. You know, this is a very special Sunday that we have today uh, because uh, this, is, this is Pentecost Sunday. Do you know any, do you know Pentecost Sunday? Do you know anything about Pentecost Sunday? No? Oh, well, this is going to be a big day for you. That's what it's going to be. Pardon? So, um, do you know, actually, did everybody get a pinwheel? Yes? We can hold them up. That's fantastic. Loving it, loving it. Now, how do we make pinwheels move? So, this is for you guys first. How do we make them move? Yes? Yeah? Pardon? With wind, and we can blow on them. Now, these ones are sturdy, so you got to really work to make them go. Um, how else could we make our pinwheels move? Do you have any ideas? Yeah, we could use our hands. We can move the... Pardon? And the real wind. Yeah, this is... When I'm inside, this is one of my favorite ways to make my pinwheel move. And I just go back and forth. Makes me feel a little like, you know, I'm Luke Skywalker. So we can make it move lots of different ways. Now... Um, we cannot see the wind outside, can we? But we know that the wind is outside and we know that it is moving things because we see things in our environment moving, like the trees, like the leaves, like other things blowing around. And it's important uh, to know that the wind is there even though we can't see it. Um, and even though we can't see it doesn't mean that it's not important. Uh, the wind helps us cool off on a hot summer day and it gets rid of the smog from our air in the summertime. And if you have a windmill powering your home, then the wind can actually turn the lights on and keep your refrigerators running and your air conditioning and your heat. What are some other things that you can think of that wind does? Blow it does blow garbage, yes. Especially on recycling day, yes. What else does wind do? Any ideas? Spreads pollen. It spreads pollen. I wrote it down as spread seeds because I thought that was, <laughs> that's the other thing that it can do. What about in the summertime? What can wind do on water in the summertime? Make it cool. Yes, yes. And it makes waves. And if you're in a sailboat, the wind can move your boat across the lake as well. 
And if you are someone who likes to use a clothing line, the wind can also dry your clothes. So the wind does lots of things and it's very, very powerful. Now God's spirit is like the wind and we can't see the Holy Spirit, but we know that the spirit is always with us and that's important for us to remember. When God sent his Holy Spirit, uh, he, he sent it to his people for the first time, and it came in like a mighty wind. So can we all make our pinwheels move like a mighty wind? Oh, not that way. There we go. God brought the Holy Spirit like a mighty wind, and the Holy Spirit helped uh, them share God's message of love with everyone by speaking in other languages. Many churches today still celebrate Pentecost. So churches all around the world today are celebrating Pentecost just like we are, but maybe not with pinwheels. So this week, what I'd like you to do is take your pinwheel home and have this serve as a reminder for you that every time you see the blades move, it's a reminder that it's not just the wind that's around us that we can't see. It's also the Holy Spirit. And no matter what we do, and no matter where we go, the Holy Spirit is always with us, even if it's something we can't see. And so this summer, when your pinwheel moves, let it serve as a reminder that we are not here alone, but that God, through his Holy Spirit, is always with us. Shall we pray together? Yes. Should we do a repeat after me? Yes. Should we ask everybody to pray with us? Yes. Yes! All right. Let's all pray together in a repeat after me prayer. Dear God. Dear God. We thank you. We thank you for sending, for sending your, Holy Spirit your Holy Spirit to comfort us, to comfort us, guide us, guide us, and live with us. And live with us. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, now you guys have got to promise me you're gonna be good with your pinwheels during church school, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> The responsive reading this morning is from Psalm chapter 104, verses 24 to 34, from the New Revised Standard Version. I will start with the odd verses, and the congregation will continue with the even verses. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things, innumerable are there, living things, both small and great. There go the ships and the Leviathan that you formed to sport in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they say, when you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles? Who touches the mountains and they smoke? I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will, I will sing, sing praise, praise to my to God, God while I have been. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. And I think we're not doing Gloria Patri, so oh, we're not go doing ahead that? with Ezekiel. Okay. Now the prayer for illumination. Holy Spirit, Open our ears, our minds, and hearts so that we encounter God's living word in the scriptures. May, the wor may that word inform and empower all our actions in the example of Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading this morning is from Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 to 14, reading from the New Revised Standard Version, updated edition. 
the valley of dry bones. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them, and there were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and you will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling and the bones came together bone to its bone. I looked and there were sinews on them. The flesh had come upon them. The skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal and say to the breath. Thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon the slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost and we are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from the graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O my people, I put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you on your own soil then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The New Testament reading is from chapter, is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. The coming of the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in, in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every people under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each of them heard because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each amazed and astonished. They asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Capulosha, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and other Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. Peter addresses the crowd. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Fellow Jews and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this, is, this was spoken through the prophet Joel. 
In the last days, it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Praise be to God. Thank you very much to our, our lay readers this morning for, for bringing us the word of the Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts together be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. I remember the day so vividly. After years of using a very temperamental 386 home computer, my world was about to undergo a massive transformation. My dad, the diligent, patient uh, bargain hunter, had stumbled upon an incredible deal at a local computer store. And we were now the proud owners of a new, faster computer the best one that our money could buy. Now, the first noticeable change was the fact that the computer no longer took up valuable real estate on our desk. Instead, it resided underneath the desk in the form of a tower, and it was our unofficial footrest. We had bypassed the 486 computer and gone directly to a Pentium chip. Our hearts, they raced with anticipation as the familiar whirring sound of a computer started, starting up began uh, for the very first time. Not only was this computer lightning fast for the time, but it also greeted us with this introductory music as if it was welcoming us officially to the world of a computer startup. What truly set this computer apart was that uh, our older equipment didn't have the same components that this new computer had. The new computer came with a modem. And it also came with six months free unlimited internet access. Now, we had never ventured into the world, into the realm of the internet before. And with this, you know, promotional offer, we stood right at the threshold of a new era that once crossed, we knew as a family, there was no turning back from. The simple sound of the modem's dial-up tone, which if you remember computers from the 90s, it was a distinctive sound. It turned our uh, established spare bedroom turned office into a gateway to the vast virtual world capable of transporting us to the farthest corners of the world without ever leaving the house. Our eyes were opened to this new language of AOL and Netscape and MapQuest, and suddenly, Yahoo! No longer was an expression of excitement, but rather a tool used to read about next week's episode of ER without having to wait for the TV guide in the Saturday paper. Dot com became synonymous with digital destinations and the at symbol functioned as an essential component, much like a postal code, uh, ensuring that our electronic mail reached its intended destination. Now, we had eagerly awaited this upgrade and on that fateful evening, a family, a room and the entire perception of the world was forever changed by the arrival of a swift and unmistakable box of wonders. Now I share this story because it was a story of firsts 
that turned out actually to be a story of multiple upgrades over time. This is Pentecost Sunday, the day when we remember some significant firsts, the birth of the church, the first sermon, the first mass baptism. And there's one more important uh, outcome to remember and celebrate, God keeping his promise, a promise that continues to impact our lives today. Our scripture passage, so wonderfully read by our lay readers this morning, it thrusts us into a moment uh, that's akin to respawning in a video game. You get dropped into the middle of a scene and you're, you're just starting with no musical interlude, no introduction, only the phrase, when the day of Pentecost came. But there is this brief pause allowing us to survey the landscape and reflect. It is then that we recall the words written in Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 23, verses 1 and 2. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the Israelites and say to them, these are my appointed festivals, appointed festivals of the Lord, which you are to proclaim as sacred assemblies. As we delve deeper into the chapter, we discover that there were seven different uh, annual feasts or festivals that the Israelites celebrated. And during these occasions, all labor stopped and people wholeheartedly uh, devoted themselves to specific celebrations at hand. The festival events observed with thanksgiving, worship, joyous feasting were designed to help everyone remember pivotal moments when God had delivered the nation. They were also encouraging them to focus on his unwavering faithfulness, both to the nation as a whole and to each individual. These festivals uh, centered around major pilgrimages, drawing people from the very farthest reaches of the globe to Jerusalem. And these feasts and, and festivals were Passover, the Feast of the Harvest or Pentecost, and the Feast of the Tabernacles. How fitting that the very event which would catapult the gospel to the ends of the earth took place during Pentecost, a time when individuals from far and wide gathered in Jerusalem. Prior to Pentecost, the disciples had spent 40 days with Christ following his resurrection. And I can only imagine the excitement that they must have felt during that time while Christ's time on earth remained limited. His mission was complete and the promise had been fulfilled. And it was time for Jesus to ascend back to heaven. And in those final moments, they all gathered together. Jesus made a promise a promise that they would be baptized in the Holy Spirit in just a few days. The Holy Spirit would be with them and would dwell within them. Yet the disciples, being humans and broken, uh, focused on and inquired about the restoration of the kingdom of Israel. But Christ gently reminded them that God's timing and his plans before reiterating the promise, the power, the reach, and the role that the Holy Spirit would play in future days. And then he was gone, leaving the disciples once again alone and waiting. Now I'm pretty sure that all of us here are familiar with the experience of waiting. And if I were to ask any of you to share a waiting story with me right now, we could fill the next 10 minutes and that would be the end of my sermon. We all have experiences where we've waited. We've waited in line, we've waited in traffic, we've waited for a meal, we've waited for a package, we've waited for an appointment, we've waited for change. Even today, we find ourselves waiting as God guides and leads the journey of St. Andrew's Maple. I have experience, a fair amount of experience, waiting in line. 
I learned the art of waiting uh, very early when I attended York University. And it's because the year that I went to York University was the year that the school extended a number of acceptances to students who had, a, had listed York as their second choice. So there were a number of students, all with York as their second choice. York said yes to most of us. Only what York didn't know is that most of us didn't get our first choice that year. So we said yes to York as our next best option. The result is that we found ourselves waiting for everything. We waited in long lines to buy our parking passes. We waited in long lines to buy our books, which included a line to get into the bookstore before a line to buy our books. We waited on hold for hours to get in to register for classes. We waited in lines to buy our lunch. We waited in line to find a parking space in the parking lot. And we also waited and hoped outside of our lecture halls that there would be a seat for us for our next session. Those years were filled with challenges, educational and environmental. But now I joke about the fact that York gave me my Bachelor of Arts and two supplemental degrees that I did not have to pay for. One, which is how to wait in line and preserve your energy. And the other is how to find a parking space in a busy parking lot, which comes in very handy at Christmas time. Waiting, as difficult as it may be, is an inevitable part of life. We often hear the old saying, good things come to those that wait. However, it's not always the case, is it? Um, our waiting can lead to a desired outcome, but does it always? Will what we are waiting for be there after the waiting period has ended? Will there be a payoff to standing in line waiting for those concert tickets, or will we find ourselves standing behind the person that just bought the last set of tickets to a now sold out event? Often, when we don't expect good things to come out of our waiting, we don't have the energy or patience for it. But when we do expect something good to come from our waiting, then we do have the patience. We do have the energy to endure the wait. Now, not everyone's gonna get this one, but think about dial up internet. We waited first for the connection to happen we waited for the pages to load on our computer coming through almost line by line, but we did this willingly because the experience was new and the possibilities were endless. Now think back to Christmas as a child when it's challenging to wait and not peek at the gifts that are underneath the tree, but we don't do it because we know that our parents have something truly wonderful planned for us. And waiting makes it all the more exciting. The disciples too waited. They waited with joy and excitement. Although they may not have fully comprehended the promise of the Holy Spirit, they still could embrace the certainty of Christ's return. With joy stemming from the promise that Jesus would come back, they went to Jerusalem and they continued the ministry work and patiently waited. They waited not because they knew precisely what was about to happen, but because they had unwavering hope, faith, and trust in Jesus. Now, the antithesis to waiting is action. And on the day of Pentecost, God's timing and action converge to redefine uh, our understanding of the celebration of Pentecost. Traditionally, Pentecost was observed on the first day of the week, exactly 50 days after the Sabbath, that followed the Feast of the First Fruits. But that moment in time, Pentecost fell 50 days after Easter Sunday and the resurrection of Christ. And this year, the celebration took on a completely different meaning. While some were in Jerusalem celebrating and, and following the calendar of feasts and festivals, others were eagerly awaiting the fulfillment of a promise. 
and it was the perfect time for an unexpected but long awaited event. Wind and fire are forces in nature that often symbolize God's presence. Wind moves freely and it is unseen and it is always around us, as I hope you'll remember this summer with your pinwheels. It can be gentle, it can be calm, and it can be refreshing on a warm summer day, but it can also grow in momentum and strength. And it can have power that changes landscapes as we've already seen this season as tornadoes have moved across North America. Forest fires fueled by climate change now dominate our news feeds daily as they spread rapidly, changing our everything in their path indiscriminately. Both wind and fire possess very distinctive sounds and they are inherently radical, but they are not without, ex um, they are not without uh, expected forms for the Holy Spirit to make an entrance. Yet, with the sound from heaven, a rushing mighty wind and flames manifesting above their heads, a small group of believers became the first to experience the baptism and the presence of the Holy Spirit. They were forever changed. It was the voice of the Holy Spirit, an entrance that demonstrated the fulfillment of a promise that provided a stage for transformative change. But before we go ahead and pigeonhole Jerusalem as this merely a, um, a destination for pilgrimages, it's important to recognize that it was really a culturally diverse place. Uh, it had many different cultures living there, many nations, many languages were spoken, uh, both genders were represented, there were generations of people, there were social classes, freedom statuses, and people of different financial means. Barriers and divisions that likely existed amongst the residents, um, just as they do in our cities today. But moments before and after the Holy Spirit's arrival, there was a noticeable shift. The difference and the distinction between the pre-Pentecost and the post-Pentecost eras. As the spirit transcends, the curse of Babel is overturned. And instead of people scattering around the globe due to their language barriers, they were all drawn together at Pentecost and they were able to hear and be understood. On a very small scale, this was the equivalent of watching three quarters of Guardians of the Galaxy part three, hearing one character say, I am Groot, I am Groot, I am Groot and suddenly understanding what he said, which is, I love you guys. Moreover, it's essential to highlight that those who spoke and responded uh, on that day of Pentecost, they were not esteemed leaders. They were ordinary people just like you and me. And the Holy Spirit moved and transformed the masses, uh, disregarding their gender, their social status, their class, and their wealth, because God doesn't concern himself with our human structures and hierarchies. Through the Holy Spirit, God reached beyond the immediate circle of Jesus, uh, those that had gathered in Jerusalem, and subsequently the realm to the far reaches of the world. In a similar vein, thanks to significant historical events like the moon landing and the collapse of the Berlin Wall, 9-11, the tsunami, and the COVID-19 pandemic, we all have personal stories to share about those events. Much like the pilgrims who would have shared their experiences as they traveled back home uh, of how they had encountered the Holy Spirit in Jerusalem, they became witnesses and messengers as they returned back to the edges of the known world. They shared their encounters and created an atmosphere of information sharing that we could liken to an original World Wide Web. This marked the beginning of the era of the spirit. No longer was worship um, some, and conversation limited to corporate events, 
that were led by recognized leaders. Now believers could and can still personally and individually reach out to God through the Holy Spirit. As children of God, knowing that our cries are heard and that we will receive a response. Likewise, individuals were powered by the Spirit to freely share and to give the message of God to others, to share the good news. As followers of Christ, we now too bear the responsibility to reflect his character and to share the gospel with the world. The Holy Spirit, it empowers us to speak, it empowers us to speak words of life, to demonstrate compassion and to engage in acts of justice and mercy. Even the disciples who had walked with Jesus had a very profound change. Their previous doubts, their thirst for influence and power and acts of betrayal and abandonment during the critical moments were transformed. They boldly proclaimed uh, the gospel of Christ, performing healings, built the church, and they were willing to lay down their lives for the Lord. All of this was possible because they were filled with the post-Easter spirit, immense or immersed in the Holy Spirit, equipped for spirit-filled ministry. Peter's transformation went from fearful denier of Christ to bold and empowered witness. And it's, it serves as the first piece of evidence the disciples uh, offered as an example of profound change. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Peter addressed the bewildered crowds and proclaimed the good news of Christ. Although the events of that first Sunday on Pentecost were extraordinary and life-changing, not everyone who witnessed them was moved in a positive way. Some people really struggled to make sense of what they saw, heard, felt, and their immediate response was really to discount the powerful display by assuming that those involved were simply drunk. They were drunk on new wine, which has a higher alcohol content. Rejection is a recurring theme through the book of Acts indicating that we should expect that as we share God's message, it may be rejected as well. There's really something about the nature of sinfulness, that sinful state that often leads us to initially mm, deny or reject the message before our hearts are changed and we accept it. How many Old Testament characters can we think of who initially responded to God with a resounding nope before God was able to change their hearts and eventually bring them around? Similarly, many people have heard the parables of Jesus and they dismiss them as mere stories without truly grasping their deeper meaning. It is noteworthy that as vibrant and powerful as the first Pentecost was, there was an equally powerful counter reaction of disbelief, rejection, and mockery. Including the, this negative aspect of the Pentecost story, it brings balance and it gives voice to the entirety of the crowd's response. It serves as a warning to both present and future believers that informing uh, others, um, it grounds them in the idea that when we share God's good news, not everyone is going to embrace it as warmly as perhaps we have. It grounds us and it serves as a warning that the reality of the Trinity faced rejection and persecution. So we should expect similar experiences. It's also critical to acknowledge that the impact of rejection and mockery, well, it can be significant. And in our imperfect state, it can lead to feelings of bitterness, discouragement, and it just magnifies the need to actively pursue, pursue uh, maturity and richness in faith, navigating the challenges and staying steadfast to our commitment to God's message. 
For approximately 2,000 years, we have lived in the age of the Spirit, waiting for Christ's return. And during this time, uh, along with our predecessors, we were com comforted by the Holy Spirit. After such a long time, it can feel difficult to remember the faithfulness of God. Our response of Psalm, it reminds us today that though uh, or through the seasons and every day, provisions of things like the sun and the rain, elements of life that we often don't think about, are reminders of God actively ruling his creation. We can be encouraged that God is faithful because each morning the sun rises and each evening it sets and the, the process repeats the next day. Faith is a verb. So if God is actively working in our world and in our lives, what actions are we taking to personally change faith as a noun to faith as a verb. Waiting is doing something. Doing something while waiting is next level. What are you doing while we wait for Christ's return that keeps your faith moving in the direction of growing in intimacy with God, deepening your personal relationship, and helping to share the message of Christ's love as we build God's kingdom today and uh, resisting the impact of rejection. Answering the question can really feel overwhelming, but let's remember that there's no rush. Life is a journey, not a destination, a familiar saying I'm sure we have all heard. We need to remember that everything takes time, that what Pentecost offers us today is uh, not just a date on the calendar. Pentecost is a season. It's a 26 week season that represents the quietest time in the church's calendar. Just as it takes time for our plants to bloom and for our gardens to produce fruits and vegetables, so too does it take time for our hearts, which are fertile ground for spiritual cultivation to grow seeds of faith. As we prepare to go out today, I hope you'll consider making a change to embrace your spiritual growth, whether it be a change to your devotional time, your prayer life, your worship, or your mission time. I hope that you embrace the growth that the Spirit offers working in you and through you. May the Lord renew your strength, energizing you to live like Jesus to go forth and walk in his power. And may we learn the language of God's love, share it with others, all thanks to the powerful help of the Holy Spirit until Christ returns. Amen. Our next hymn is, okay, I have to tell you, this is my very favorite hymn. So please stand if you are able as we sing our next hymn, hymn number 389, Breathe on Me, Breath of God.
At Pentecost, God poured out gifts of the Spirit upon the church to equip Christ's followers to bear witness to him throughout the world. We offer our gifts and our lives to God so that the witness of the church will continue to be a blessing of the Holy Spirit in this generation and beyond. Our tithes and offerings will now be received. And donations can be made through our partnership with Canada Helps. Go to www.candahelps.org slash en slash dn slash 56495. Or donations can be mailed or delivered to St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church, 9860 Keel Street, Vaughan, Ontario, L6A 3Y4. If you're interested in signing up for pre-authorized remittance where you're donation will be debited from your account on a regular monthly basis, please send an email to the church office at St. Andrews Pres Maple at billnet.ca, ST for Saint, Andrews without an apostrophe, Pres for Presbyterian, Maple for the town we're in at billnet.ca. And now friends, let us stand for the doxology. grace and power bless the gifts we offer so that they may accomplish surprising things in Jesus' name. Bless our lives too so that our words and action bear witness to Jesus' love and mercy each and every day. Amen. And we've got a couple of announcements for everybody today. Uh, so their kids are enjoying Sunday school at the moment, uh, but uh, um, unfortunately, our Sunday school teachers aren't available next week, so there won't be a Sunday school next week. So please just keep the kids in the sanctuary for next week. I want to thank everybody who came out for last week and who we had our spring cleanup. So I want to thank all those who were able to come out and help clean up the churchyard last week. Uh, that's a great help, and uh, it looks ni a lot nicer than it did the week before. Um, just a reminder also, if you're interested in joining our tenant, uh, JIL, they have their anniversary um, uh, celebration today at uh, 2 o'clock. So if you want to stick around after fellowship, you're welcome to join them. They sent, extended that invitation to us all. And we've got a little uh, fellowship time coming up. That's family fun night. It's on June the 7th at 7 p.m. So I uh, hope you're going to have a fun time and come out for that, particularly with the kids, etc. And then our next one. Oh, well, uh, the wonderful pianist behind me, uh, Gina, is uh, director at uh, Mosaic School of Music, and she's holding a couple of recitals here uh, on May the 26th and June the 2nd. They're started at around 6.30, open to the public. So if you'd like to come and hear some young prodigies on their way up on the music, there's going to be some piano performances, vocals, violins, and guitar. So if you want to have a nice really inexpensive evening, there's a shot for you. Come to that on the 26th uh, and on the 2nd of June. So friends, thank you for that. And now I'm just gonna share my mission moment for today. Gifts to Presbyterian Sharing, support international partners through leadership development grants. In 2023, the National Council for Higher Education recommended that the position of assistant librarian at Zomba Theological University in Malawi 
should be requ should require at least a bachelor's degree. So the Reverend Dr. Tukuze Chitsulo, Vice Chancellor, requested support from PCC for Assistant Librarian Jane Malabu Makupete to upgrade her diploma in library information to a Bachelor of Arts degree in record management. Jane was ecstatic and very grateful when she heard of the PCC support. So again, friends, sometimes, you know, we talk about the gifts to Presbyterian sharing or to Presbyterian World Service Development, and it's very broad, you know, in terms of, you know, helping uh, feed, uh, helping with disaster relief, et cetera. Sometimes, you know, just helping that one person uh, take a step up can then help to, then she can help so many others. So again, I want to thank you all for your support uh, through our mission here at St. Andrews. So just remember that you can always fill in that box on your donations and all the funds that we receive uh, for those purposes go uh, to those worry causes. Now, friends, let me send it back to Lynn. Thank you very much for bringing us our announcements this morning, as well as an inspiring mission moment. Let us take a moment and pray. Let us pray. Wind of the Spirit, blow through your whole church today on this day of Pentecost. Blow through us and renew our faith. Reawaken our love for God and let the flames of your love warm our hearts with trust in Jesus. Dare us to do great things in his name. Wind of spirit, blow through us and give us energy to serve you as the body of Christ working in the world. Open our eyes to recognize needs for ministry and mission around us. Open our hearts to welcome newcomers and meet those we don't know yet. Open our hands to share in the tasks that need doing. And open our lips in prayer and praise. Wind of the Spirit, blow through us and give us understanding for all those whose lives seem so different from ours. For those who face situations we've never encountered. For those with whom we have disagreed. For problems and challenges that we face at home and at work. And for a world facing so much turmoil. Wind of spirit blow through us and bring healing. For those who pay, face the pain of illness, discouragement, or disappointment. For all who know sorrow, sadness, or grief. And Father, this morning we lift up you to you specifically, our sister in Christ, Dorothy, as she mourns the loss of her brother Lloyd. We also ask that your spirit would bring uh, hope for those who feel pressure in uncertain times. Wind of spirit blow through us and bring us the compassion of Christ so that others will see the compassion of Christ so that they can serve you in the world in his name. Blow through us. Refresh us as his faithful followers. Unite us across the differences as together we pray the words Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, Our Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those that sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, our closing hymn is hymn number 471, We Are One in the Spirit. Spirit, we are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that all you get in the one day be restored. And now know we are Christians by our love, by our love. And now know we are Christians by our love. Oh. 
There's one more. I just there's one more. My computer wasn't plugged in. Okay. All praise to the Father from all things come. And all praise to Christ Jesus who is God's only Son. And all praise to us who takes us one. And they'll know we are Christians by our love. On this day of Pentecost, go in the strength of the Spirit to serve with renewed energy, whether the Spirit, wherever the Spirit moves you. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace, believing that you may abound in love by the power of the Holy Spirit and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And on behalf of the session here at St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church, I want to thank you all for being with us here today, those who are in the sanctuary, those who are at home watching the live stream, and those who are watching the video replay. And for those who are now leaving us and not staying for some time of fellowship, may you now go in peace. Thank you and have a blessed week.